In my last video, I offered some insights into the unique Australian animal kingdom. In this one, I'll take you through the iconic Daintree forests. near the Daintree Forest, depart Freshwater Railway Station in Cairns in the morning, return with Skyrail Rainforest Cableway at 2.30 p.m. I will put the booking info in the description box or you could book a coach tour. No one's special here, you get hit by a train, you won't feel special. <laughs> spectacular, Sir David Attenborough had called it the most extraordinary place on earth. Behind me are the spectacular Baron Falls. Baron Falls is about half an hour from Kirenda village. Join me. The Daintree forests are 180 million years old. They are the oldest rainforests in the world. On reaching Kuranda, you can stroll through the village, pick up a souvenir or two, perhaps a boomerang or a didgeridoo, which happens to be the aboriginal musical instrument. Visit the Australian Butterfly Sanctuary, Bird World, the Koala Gardens and the Heritage Markets. I have covered the Wildlife Sanctuaries in my last video.
This historic plane wreck or the shell of a C-42 sky train featured in the movie Sky Pirates in 1987. Do not forget to sample some crocodile or wild barramundi at the iconic Frog's restaurant. On your way back to Cairns, the sky rail stops at a couple of lookout points. Get off the cable car and join a guided bushwalk with one of the very knowledgeable forest rangers. The most prominent uh, avian predators that we get would be the owls. Okay, so we have many different owl species that exist in the forest here. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, many different owl species that exist in the forest here, and uh, they are one of the apex predators of this environment as well. You know what's pretty interesting about owls is that they're the only known bird, group of birds I should say, that can fly without creating a wing beat. So the way that this works is at the very tips of their flight feathers, they have this, this microscopic um, structure where the tips of the feathers basically peel away and break out into all different directions. And what that does is it disrupts the air as it flows over the wind, preventing it from crackling like you would see in other birds, okay, with the, with the pace of the, of the wing. So that's why they can fly in complete silence, which when you're a nocturnal hunting bird, makes sense. You don't want to be here. Heard. Um, so yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um, Cassowary is actually a really awesome conservation story. So if you went back to the early 19, 1980s, there was a population density study that was done in Australia that suggested southern cassowary population was as little as 150 individuals total in all of Australia. Okay? They then did a secondary study to this to find out what the causes of death were. And of all the animals that they found, only one of them had died from natural causes. By far the most common thing that was killing cassowaries was cars, so road toll. The second most common thing was domestic dogs. The third was feral pigs. Yeah. yeah. So back in 1988, after this research was, was submitted, they actually turned this whole area, or the whole cassowaries natural habitat in Australia, which is this rainforest, into World Heritage Zone. So 1988, this got changed to World Heritage, which gives it the largest level of protection you can put on the natural environment. Okay. During that phase, they prevented the amount of roads you were allowed to build here. They slowed down a lot of the, the speed limits of the roads here. Okay, they put signs up everywhere. They also prevented all dogs in Australia from going to national parks anymore. So that's why you can't take your dog to national parks. Okay, and they also tried to do a bit of a program of eradicating a lot of the pig, feral pig population, which is ongoing. Uh, and because of that, the cassowaries numbers have skyrocketed since then. They're back up to about two and a half to three thousand with an eighty percent accuracy rate. Which is, which is incredible. What an incredible conservation story. Warm the cockles of my heart. Yeah. 
Uh, what's next to you like? It doesn't matter. Venomous. Venomous. venomous? Yeah. Okay, so the red belly that we had is considered in the top 15 most venomous snakes on the planet. Okay, he's an lapid species, which is the family of snakes in Australia that are highly venomous. They have fixed front fangs, and the majority of their venom is a neurotoxin, which attacks your nervous system and stops your heart from beating, which isn't great for us. Um, that being said, the red bellies, I, uh, they're famously docile, very yeah. uninclined to bite, the like and there's much. never actually been a recorded death from that species, even in Australia's known history, even though they are very capable of killing something. Easily have enough venom to do that. Um, they're also famous because they eat other reptiles. So they they um, specialize in eating other snakes and lizards, including things like brown snakes, which for some reason everyone always gets happy when I say that. Now you'd say, all of that is good, Samita. You have shown us the butterflies, birds, koalas, kangaroos, wombats and quokkas. You have taken us through the older than Amazon, Dane tree forests. But what about the fishies, the marine life, the Great Barrier Reef? Sea turtles, sharks, snakes, crocs. Hang on. All of that is coming next week. In the meanwhile, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe. You wouldn't want to miss even a single one of these Awesome videos. Share. Comment. I enjoy your comments. I reply to each one of your comments personally. This is Samita signing off. Till next time. Bye for now.